If you want to produce professional videos for your business, Adobe Premiere Elements 10 is one of a handful of options that's fairly affordable under the $100, $150 price point and yet still offers enough power that you're not going to look like an amateur. Let's take a look under the hood. So to get started, we've opened up the program. As you can see here, this is the entrance screen and you've got three choices. You can organize footage, you can create a new project or open a new project. We're going to start with just a really quick orientation of what a new project looks like and then go cut into an open project to take a look at some of the things you can use to make your videos look pretty decent. So we start by clicking on new project and that's going to open up the window and the first thing you're going to be asked to do is to save your project. A couple of really quick pointers. Number one, you need to know what kind of footage you're importing. Okay, so sure, we'll call it my project. We're going to put it in this folder. But if you don't understand what type of camera you've used, you may end up importing the wrong type of footage. So, you know, since I've been working with this particular product with some older AVCHD video that I have, I normally would use the HD 1080i 30, which happened to match the small Canon camera I'd used to record some video footage really important step is choosing the right one here. So we'll just go ahead and say OK, OK. And now the CD-ROM and product comes with extra templates and themes and titles that you're going to want to install. I haven't installed them, but you're going to want to install those to give yourself more choice about styling your project. So we'll just go ahead and click No. So let me just resize that window so you can see the whole thing. This is what you're going to see when you open a new project. Now let me just really quickly orient you here. On our left, we have a monitor window that lets us watch the movie that we're building. Pretty simple. You can play, you can step forward, and you can fast forward and fast rewind. You can also create new titles by clicking the text button, use the scissors button to cut videos that you're editing down here and you can even do a freeze frame. Over here on the right is where we're going to not only manage footage but take the video we drop onto our timeline and work with it. And then the third thing down here is the timeline. In Adobe Premiere Elements 10 they have a timeline and a scene line. The timeline is for more advanced editing but if you have a series of clips you're happy with you can literally just import them to the scene line drop them on here, put a transition between them, and it will create a decent little video from that. Not what we're going to show you today, but it's fun to play around with. And in fact, there's even an instant movie feature. You can see that button up here, where if you have a variety of photos and maybe some music and uh, a few video clips, Adobe will actually analyze your video and put a movie together for you. But we're not going to take a look at that today. Instead, we're going to go and look at building a movie on the timeline and some of the neat things that you can do in Adobe Premiere Elements 10. Now, one quick point before I do that, in order to work on an existing project, you need to have footage in there. So to get footage into your project, the easiest way is to simply double click in the project window, grab any footage that you might want to import and select open. So, but since I'm working with an existing video, it's already got all of its footage imported. So that's what you'll see here. And another really important point is that you're going to see a media loading message when you first open up an existing project. Really important to give the the software the time to load in all the media before you start to try to work on it um, especially if you're going to render out you can't go ahead and we'll get to this later share your video if Adobe hasn't imported and opened up all the media it needs to work with so essentially here you can see that we've got a video that I've put together on the timeline you can see that it starts over here with a beach scene this is actually an interview we did in October 2010 with Dan and Jessica Rice who own a really neat American made t-shirt store 66 to Cali which you'll find at the end of Route 66 on the Santa Monica Pier in California so what we want to do here is simply take a look at a few of the things we've done. So the first thing that makes a great video is a great intro. So what we did, and this is just really simple, this video didn't take time at all to do, is we took some footage that we had of waves crashing into the pier, just shot on a really inexpensive couple hundred dollar HD video camera, and we just took a clip of that out. To show you how we did that, I'm just going to drop this on the timeline. So you just drop your video footage on the timeline, the audio window's already opened up. When you open the software it's probably going to look like this, so you're going to need to click on that arrow button and then you just find the part where you want the video to start and end. We can actually see the biggest wave because the audio, even though it's all scrunched up, we can see that this is the most intense part of the audio. That gives us a clue that we're probably going to want to start right around here. Preview window closed, maybe back a tiny bit, and we can just use the scissors tools that I mentioned earlier to go in and crop the start and end of the video. And now we've taken what started off as one minute and two seconds video and we've dropped it down to 12 seconds showing that wave crashing. 
So I'm going to just delete that. That was the first thing that we did to make our videos. We made this wave crashing and that's uh, on the first layer. Now you can zoom in and out. I'll go zoom in. So that's on this part of the timeline right here. But then we also wanted to have a title, Route 66, with fading in, discovering an American dream at the end of America's most iconic highway. Making a title is a real cinch. There's three ways actually to enter a title. You can click on the T button, you can go File, New, Title, or you can go Title, New Title, Default Still, Roll, or Crawl. Now if you plan to just make an ordinary title, the fastest thing to do is simply to click on the T button, and you're going to notice that it's going to put them some text, add text right in here. To show you how we did that, we just typed in Route 66. We could have edited ourselves and added drop shadows and even gradients and different things that we might have wanted to have on the text. But instead, we just used one of the presets. So you can see there's a variety of presets we've got here, and we can make that 182. And we'll go ahead and change that to root 66. Might be a little bigger than our original, but I think you get the idea. And we can position it on screen. Now, we had that nice text animation effect. You'll notice that there's a variety of text animations that are built in. Now, I can adjust the spacing of these windows by rolling over the divider and dragging it open and closed. So let's just open this up and take a look. We've got wipe into center. That's what that would look like. We've got fade out by line. And so in order to apply an effect, you simply select the text you want to apply the effect to and you would click on the apply button. Now an important point is that you can use this text tool. You can drag a text box and put in a whole paragraph of text that wraps but you're not going to be able to apply these text animation effects to that wrapping paragraph. If you want to apply those effects, you're going to want to put them in like we did here and have each line have its own effect. And we happen to use the fade in by line effect. That's what you're seeing when you look at that in the initial intro. When you're done editing, one of the oddities about this program that's a little bit different than Premiere Pro, which I'm more used to using, is that you need to actually click on an edit effects button and a done button to get in and out of things. So we really don't want to keep that new effect, the root new title, root 66. So let's close this back up again. You'll notice that when you make a new title, it inserts it in exactly where you were on the timeline. So it inserted it right there. We're just going to go ahead and delete that. So the next thing you'll notice that we've done is we've actually got a picture-in-picture -picture video of Dan Rice talking about the number of people who come out to the pier. About 300,000 people per year travel Route 66 and end up in this pier. So how do you do that? How do you get the picture-in-picture? -picture? It's surprisingly easy. So again, we're going to need to A, have a video clip, and B, apply some effects. So let's just grab a video clip. So here is the clip of Dan talking before we did the picture-in-picture. -picture. 300,000 people per year travel Route 66 and end up in this pier. So what we want to do is we want to first of all adjust the size and then we can position it and we're going to do that by clicking on edit effects. And what's going to happen, you'll notice nothing happened. This can be a little frustrating at first. You need to select the clip before you can apply keyframes and edit effects, etc. So we're going to click on edit effects and so we're going to open up motion and you'll see we've got something here called scale. We're going to drop that down to 52% and we're going to position it up in the top right by clicking on the clip and then clicking on the little bullseye in the middle and dragging it along. But that's only giving us one part of the effect. We want to now go and make it have that nice t uh, tilt and drop shadow. To do that, we're going to say done and we're going to click on effects and this time we're going to click on perspective. So let's start by dragging the drop shadow effect onto the video and then we're going to drag on the basic 3D. Now some other packages if you wanted to get into a lot of 3D um, have a little bit more sophistication but this is decent. So we open that up and you can see our drop shadow effect. Oh, looks like I've got to say done. It looks like that basic 3D didn't actually go on. So I'll drag that on again. There we go. Edit effects. And now you'll see that in addition to controlling the degree of tilt, you can control the degree of swivel. So let's change that to a swivel of 32, which rotates it around, and that's way too much. Let's drop that down to a six degree tilt to make things a little more reasonable. So we now got a drop shadow, a basic 3D effect, and we use the motion scale to shrink that down to get this nice picture in picture which gives us a 3D feel to the video clip. So another important thing that we've done and I've just expanded things here so I can show you is that we've actually got a fade in the audio and we accomplished that by putting in a keyframe. So let me just expand this and show you how this works. Well first of all just like you can drag the main windows you can also drag these windows over here. So let's open up that audio which we're going to see. 
So what happens with the keyframes is you don't want to have just a single frame. You want to have a transition. Because if I was to remove this keyframe here, I just have to click on that and delete it, the entire audio stays down. So what we want to do instead is manipulate it through two keyframes. So let's just remove this keyframe here and we'll reset things to the baseline. So this is where we start. We've got a flat level of audio, no change. But what we actually want to do is when we have um, Dan come on and speak, we don't want him competing with this audio. Listen to this. About 300,000 people per year. Pretty hard to hear him. And so what we want to do is we want to come to the beginning of the part where Dan's about to come on and speak. And we're going to go into that clip and we're going to add a keyframe. Now, a point of order. If you don't have the clip selected, you can't make a keyframe. You must select clip and then you simply click on the add remove keyframe button. Back it off a little bit. That sounds about good. Put in another keyframe. And then you can take this keyframe that you created and you can drag it down, which is going to reduce the audio volume. Now a note about these keyframes is that you can use them to animate different effects beyond the audio as well. So for example, I'm here at the end of the clip where it's, I've added in an extra bit for a minute where it's a transition to Dan speaking. So we're going to go and fade into Dan speaking. So I could go and take this little clip of Dan, move it over so it abuts the second clip. I'm going to go ahead for this and remove my cross dissolve. Now as you know, we've already put on a basic 3D effect. Well, I can animate that effect, so I can click Edit Effects. Got to click on the clip, click Edit Effects, and open up Basic 3D. So I'm going to draw your attention to two things. There's a stopwatch here, and we can click on that to allow us to insert keyframes related to the swivel and the tilt and the distance to image. So you can see they've all come in. And then we can also show the keyframes. And so it's important to do these two things together. So you can see where we are in the video. We've got a whole bunch of keyframes inserted. But we want to also go to the end. And now what's a little bit strange is you don't click this again. If you were to click toggle animation again, it's actually going to take them all off. It does warn you saying that it will delete them. Do you want to continue? So we'll cancel. So what we need to do now is we need to go through and we need to put in our own keyframes using these insert keyframe buttons. And now that we've done that, we can adjust the intensity and the effect of them. So over here, we'll take from 32 degrees and we'll set it down to zero. You need to be on the layer and you need to click on the keyframe. So we're going to take that down to zero. We're going to come on and for the distance to image, we're going to make it zero. And we're going to ignore the next two. So now we're going to see that we've got the image in full and it's tilting. And of course what's happening is it's transitioning to the other image of him, but he's still smaller in this little picture in picture. So the final thing that we're probably going to do is come and adjust the motion in exactly the same way. So we're going to close up the basic 3D and again we're just going to back off a little bit or what we want to do is hit done. Temporarily take off this uh, transitional cross dissolve, go back to our click, clip and edit. And so this time we're going to want to step it back about one unit. In fact, let's go right back over to here. There we go. And this is where we're going to also keyframe the motion. So again, we're going to click the keyframes and here they come. And Of course, we only need to do scale and position. So actually, they're already in there. So we need, what we want to do is kind of come over to the end. And we're going to add a keyframe by clicking the Add Keyframe buttons. And now on the scale, look at this. We need to come back because it's been 52 all the way and add a scale keyframe here. There we go. Really important to get this right. It can be a little bit finicky, but it's worth spending the time to learn. So in terms of scale, we're going to set that to 100, but it's off center. We had to move it up and to the right. So now we're going to need to go to position. And the easiest way to do this is actually sometimes just to drag these along. That way you can get a sense for whether you're going up or down. But the other option is that you can type it in directly. So you need to make sure that you're on the right one. So we want the final one to be the same as the original video that we're moving into. So you just have to go to the original video if you want to see what its dimensions are and they happen to be 720 by 540. So we can come along and make that change and then we just have to click done. So we can also preview right in here to see if we've done this right or if we've messed something up. Looking pretty good. So we'll go ahead and click done. We'll take a look at that. We are going to need a cross dissolve transition as well. And then down this here, but for the moment we just want to undo that so we're just going to go into edit effects 
and once again we're going to go want to go into our basic 3D and just remove all those keyframes that we created. So that resets things. We may actually have to reset the basic information that we'd had originally as well. Because as you'll see, it's averaged it to where we are in the timeline. So um, not perfect, but I'm not going to fuss with that because we're just going to go in and use the undo key. That's the other thing is that, uh, yes, you can do it through the edit effects window, but you can also then use the control Z or edit undo to undo things as well. Sometimes it's just faster to use control Z. So the final thing we need to do, because this kind of comes on just with a jumpy format, it's not there and then suddenly it's there. That looks really awkward and tacky. So we're going to go on to the transitions and we're going to use a cross dissolve effect to have that come on. Now there are a lot of transitions that you can use. Uh, in fact, most of these are also available in the, the pro version. And uh, important to note though is that you can really actually make your videos look unprofessional by using too much and overdoing it. So subtle tends to be better. So we're just going to do a little cross dissolve. About 000 for you. So starting to look pretty decent. Now we come on and exactly like we've just done there, we've got the video clips where we've interviewed Dan and we've got a cross dissolve transition going between each of the cuts. Uh, well, my name is Dan Rice and I'm the so you can see that it makes it nice and smooth. Here in Santa Monica. Here. So Dan's going to tell his story which is how he noticed that when he went and traveled on Route 66 that none of the t-shirts were actually made in America which was kind of ironic for America's classic iconic highway and so he, after working as a therapist he decided to work together with his wife Jessica to create this company that makes um, made in America t-shirts for Route 66 and there's a neat story you should actually watch the video about you know how he got rights to the sign and the, the end of the trail at the pier in Santa Monica but getting back to the point of this is we've got some cross dissolves between all these different interview clips and you know that's a large part of the work is deciding what to keep and what to throw away and how to position it you can put photos you can overlay things on here so if you had a part in the video that was getting a little boring where there's a lot of talking you can go into your project window Let's pull back to one of these clips with Dan and you can drop in a photograph, you could drop in video over top of video so you could have as he's talking, if he's talking about something being on the beach, you might want to suddenly have it shift to some footage of the beach. That happens to be a still. We'll take that off. You could just as easily though drop in video. Now you have to watch it, you have to watch that um, you're going to notice it goes onto a second layer that you don't stick it inside the video because that's going to split it apart. That's not what you want. Now you wouldn't want to have this though, you wouldn't want to have t a soundtrack competing with him talking. Sounds pretty awful, right? So you're just going to click on that, you're going to unlink your audio and video, delete off the audio track, and let's again put some of those nice um, cross dissolve transitions on. We'll do that start and finish. So you can see that we're transitioning and we can have, it's actually really nice if you have three to six seconds per video clip to go from shot to shot to shot, especially if you can keep your subject in the shot. So final thing we want to do after spicing up the video and putting some photos in and having some different angles and cuts and things is to finish it and finish it nicely. The first thing we're going to do is give Dan a little plug since we've used his video to explain how this all works. And you can see another nice effect. So that's Dan's website and we accomplished that just using the title tool. So we literally just clicked on the T. It's hard to see sometimes where that text is. But it's uh, 662cali.com. We can very easily see it by changing the style to the black. And what we did is we took a, a layer of color and we just dropped that. And now in Adobe Premiere Elements 10, you can arrange that so I can send that to the back. So now you can see that the final step was to select that text again, that 662cali.com, and apply a text animator. And this time we happen to use the one where it comes in letter by letter. So we just applied that and we had a nice little fade in that it made it look pretty professional for about three minutes worth of work. So basically we want to end it so we have the nice plug of the business and we're again going to have a switch over to a beach scene that we can find in the My Projects window. This one right up here. And I'll just show you what we did. We dropped the beach scene on 
and similar as to what we did before we didn't want the sound of the beach so we unlinked the audio and video and we got rid of the audio and then once we'd done that we actually didn't want this whole long beach scene to, of the motion video we wanted to use a freeze frame freeze frames can be used to really nice effect so we decided we wanted to come up on the beach and then freeze to do that we just put the cursor where we wanted to be on the video and we clicked freeze frame and we're gonna actually make this uh, 10 seconds although you can change it really easily and then we click insert in movie you can also export it so you'll notice that it's not on the same layer so we can easily move it up and we are not going to put in a transition because it's going to look seamless it's just going to stop and so we've got the um, beach scene we wanted to have this nice little thing too that talked about route 66 in the close so let's just open this up a little bit more easier to work with and you can see that we've got uh, title 11 which we don't want we're going to delete that out oops I deleted the wrong title so I just undid that and put the right one back in so one of the annoying things about the titles is that it does insert it right into the movie unlike you know Premiere Pro where you then drag and drop it to where you would like but hey Premiere Pro costs a lot more than $99 so we're gonna go hit play and see what we want the title to look like So how did we accomplish all that? First thing I'm going to draw your attention to is this Route 66 sign which is just nicely um, cut out and placed on the beach. To get that we needed to use a graphic format that would allow us to have a transparent background. Now if I drag a JPEG onto the timeline, you're going to notice that it has this big black ground, it could be any color, this happens to be black, and that looks pretty clunky. Whereas if I take the same graphic into Photoshop or another video editing program and I cut out that black background, I can save it as a PNG. And the PNG, exact same file other than that background has been, drag uh, has been removed, looks like that. So that's one of the first tips is to take a look at what file formats you can use to make a little, your graphics a little bit sharper. And then we simply use that title uh, tool again to make Santa Monica as one line, end of the trail as another, and we just applied an effect that faded in by character. So that was really simple. And then the final thing is we have these rolling credits. So let's just take a look at how those are done. Uh, they're pretty simple to do. Title, new title, default role. And you're going to notice that there's going to be a style in here, so we would just make that root 66 and you're not forced to keep this layout so right in here I can put in things like you know videography Kevin Jackson etc and I can just use the cursor key cursor tool and I can move that around and I can select both of these and I can move them around if I wanted to I could put in another shape layer and have it go in behind I can change the color of that shape layer not that I necessarily want to. I can give that a gradient. I can again arrange send to back. So there's quite a bit that you can do in terms of managing your titles. And the nice thing is is that Adobe takes care of the process of the title moving and rolling for you. When you're done and happy with what you've done, you would just hit done. And once again, that's now going to insert that new title where we had it on the timeline, which we're going to want to remove. Do you notice though something that it didn't start right away? So there's a delay on the title coming on. So we actually have to come in and delete that. Now I would highly recommend that if you don't like something and remove it, that you delete it from your list of assets as well so that you don't start to get confused. You can make folders and start to manage. Um, so I could make a folder and I might just make my JPEGs or, or PNGs or and then you can start uh, managing files by placing them into those. So as your project gets bigger that's useful to do too. Uh, in terms of editing there's a lot that we didn't look at. We've got video transitions and audio transitions and if we, sh we can go in and look at uh, all of them or just some of them um, so we can go in and look at audio transitions. We can also do the same thing for effects. So we can go in and our video effects and our audio effects and in video we've got things like adjust. You might want to use some of these color adjustments if your video is off. You've got color correction options as well. The auto tone and vibrance is a really nice feature. Almost anything 
benefits from an auto levels, an auto color. And so even though it's really subtle, we can go and take a look at the effect and we can see it off and on. Makes a pretty big difference, doesn't it? Um, in fact, you might even want to go somewhat in between. So there's uh, adjustments that you can make as well if you want to get a little more hands-on. Once again, we click Done to get out of the Effects window and we'll take a look at a few of the other effect options. So we've got Adjustments, Blurs and Sharpens, Color Corrections. We also have some different art and cartoon effects, a film effect, perspective, which is where we got our drop shadow on our 3D, and then you can get into things like stylizing. Although a lot of the times, unless you use this very subtly and very in a minimalist way, it can actually make your video look more tacky rather than enhancing it. On the audio effects end of things, you can really get in and do a fair number of things for a 99 US dollar program. and um, You've got volume and different things you can affect here. You can also adjust the volume right here in every single clip. So uh, there's no audio on this particular clip, so we won't see it. Let's go to one that has some audio. We'll go on over here and edit effects. And now you're going to see that there's a volume adjustment. You can also, if you want to have a, something be not fully transparent, we could take this Route 66 graphic and uh, we can go in and we can change its opacity. So we could allow some of the background ocean to start coming through the sign. So you can see, done. That now, instead of just fading on, stays on with an opacity. The last thing I'll point out is the soundtrack. So we'll go back to, to all of our assets. And if I scroll down, you're gonna see that there's this MP3. Really important to make sure you have proper copyright on these things. Uh, this happens to be from Kappa Productions. It's a royalty-free music collection that we have. And so you can, you know, find out, again, just like with the video clips, certain part of your audio where you want to start. You can see that it's building in volume here, so we might want to start right in here. And again, I can tell that because these lines are getting darker and more intense. I can just use those scissors tools to crop up some of this, delete that out, delete that out and then I'm left with a little bit of audio to end things off. I can also go in and adjust and fade the audio and uh, if I'm not happy with the length and I want it to go a little further I just have to literally go to the end of the clip and drag on either side and it's going to take me to the beginning and end of the clip. And it's the same for video, it's the same for still photos. That's how I could easily have adjusted that freeze frame length. So it's really easy to work with this, these assets. So the final step in making our video is to give some credit to the people that were involved. So we'll throw on some titles for Dan Rice, uh, owner 66 to Cali. And again, you need to look at these things and ask yourself whether or not they uh, are working and uh, adjust them if they're not. You can quite easily size things. Now you'll notice I've added the title repeatedly here. There's two ways that we can do that. Um, the slower way is to simply find it in your um, project line and drag it to where you need it to be. Or what I would do is I would simply come to the original one and hit copy, come down to the end, and I will just paste, paste, paste. And so then I can drag and drop these. I find just that so speeds things up a little bit. So we probably want to put uh, an acknowledgement of Jessica on here as well. So if we wanted to edit an existing title, we would just um, select it and double click. And you'll notice now the title, op title options come up over here, but in this case we're going to want to make a new title. Now because we want it to look like this and just add Jessica's name, we're actually going to go on to the title here and we're just going to click duplicate. And of course it's going to be a lot easier on you if you go through and give some of these things names so that you can manage them. And so here we're just going to come on over to this title and uh, we'll need to put it on the timeline to work with it. So we'll put it on the timeline down here and we'll double click. And now we're just going to go and throw Jessica's name on. So then we'll just delete out these two titles and we'll drag that over instead. So our video is ready to go. Final step is now to decide how we want to publish it. We've got the choice of sharing it to DVD, disc, online, our computer, or even now mobile phones and players, or less rare probably these days, tape. So a nice feature about this product is that you can literally just have this be exported and pushed right up to Facebook and YouTube. Now for this to work you would just select the platform that you want so we can click YouTube 
and there's some options a little bit that you've uh, got you've got some presets you can choose from and uh, once you've done that you're going to go next and then you're going to be prompted for your YouTube login information Facebook works pretty much the same way but since we're not going to use our YouTube account right now we're going to instead export this to the computer again pretty simple you just say you want to export to the computer by clicking on it you can choose between Adobe Flash video format MPEG format AVCHD format now AVCHD is very commonly used by the smaller consumer level camcorders we're going to pick MPEG and then once you've done that you've got a bunch of presets again we shot it in uh, 1080i but we're going to drop it down to 720p so we're going to go and we're going to select 720 and we're going to hit save. Now once we do this it's going to start the export process and we'll get a finalized video. So it can take quite a bit of time to save and this is also the time when you have to worry about your computer overheating or crashing especially if you've got a particularly big file. Now this one's under 8 minutes so I went ahead and did that it took about 15 minutes and now I just have to click done. So now I can come on over to the folder where I saved it and there it is review video final. Double click on it and open up in the media player and take a look. Now we're going to put the entire video online if you want to check it out please do but as you can see there's a lot less jerkiness so in other words the final render applies all the effects and it's able to render them so that they flow smoothly through the final video so you're going to find that some things that may look a bit choppy when you're editing it will look a lot better when you're done with your final production let's take a look at our credits at the end here much smoother than what we were seeing when we were trying to look at it in the preview window and monitor windows. Now the final thing I'll say is that this video footage was shot on a consumer level HD camera. The camera that we would normally shoot with is a Canon XF105. There's also a 100 version available and this is where if you go for a higher end equipment you're going to find that Adobe Premiere Elements 10 is not the program for you because it will not work with that footage. So you want to make sure that the program matches your needs. But to be fair, you know, when you start getting into higher end equipment, most of the consumer and uh, less expensive versions of video editing software are not going to be able to handle that footage. So in conclusion, Adobe Premiere Elements 10 is a nice little program if you want to start creating professional videos for your business. As you've seen, it's pretty easy to make a nice introduction, splice together some interview clips, add rolling credits at the end, titles throughout the video, adjust the colors in the video. A lot of stuff that you can do in a high-end editor, you can do in this program as well. You just don't get all of the customization features. Still, for the cost, if you want to start putting videos online, this is a pretty good way to go.